Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model foundation systems in the STAD Foundation Advanced General Mode. Over the next series of videos, we will show you how to model foundation systems in STAD Foundation Advanced. This will include two major workflows. The first workflow is to model your supports and your loads directly in STAD Foundation Advanced. Our second workflow is to import your model information, including your supports and your model loading, from a STAD Pro analyzed model. In this video, we will show you the complete workflow for modeling your foundation system directly in STAD Foundation Advanced. This will include the process for modeling all of your supports, including column locations and pedestals, and how to model your support loading, which will include all of your load cases and load combinations. After your foundation plan has been created in STAD Foundation Advanced, you are ready to move on to loading your supports. Over in the main navigator, we are now going to select the Loads and Factors group. The process for modeling supports in STAD Foundation Advance begins with creating your load cases. So I'm going to select this first item over here to create a new load case. When I select it, I can enter all of my information over my load description pane at the right hand side. For my load title, I can enter this as anything I want. I'm going to call my first load case dead load. I'm going to indicate this as a primary load case in the load case type field. And you'll see that I have three options here. I have primary, service, and ultimate. For all of my load cases, I'm going to enter them as primary, which means that they're going to be used in both our service load checks and our ultimate load checks. Later on, when I generate my load combinations, I will generate service load checks, which will be used against your allowable bearing pressure or to evaluate your footing stability, or I'll also generate some ultimate load combinations, which will be used in the shear and reinforcement design of the foundations. For my loading type, I'm going to enter this as a dead load. Now the loading type will be defined as your load type to be used in your load combination generation. So it's very important to enter an appropriate load type here. After I enter all of this information, I'm going to go ahead and click Add, and I have my first load case created. I'm going to do the same thing to add a second load case. I'm going to enter a live load case. So I'll enter live load. Again, my load case type is primary. And my loading type this time, I will select as live. I'm going to complete that by clicking add. Now if I need to change anything after creating a load case, I can just simply click on the load case up here and update the parameters down here. After you create all of your load cases for your model, you are ready to start loading the different supports in your model. Now for this particular model, we are preparing for just some simple foundation types such as a spread footing or pile cap foundation. And for those simple foundation types, we will only be modeling column reaction loads. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight my dead load case, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select add column reaction load. Now if I were preparing to model a mat foundation, I would also have the ability to add some loads directly to the surface of the foundation. But these options wouldn't be applicable to those simple foundation types. I'm going to go ahead and select add column reaction load. And then I can enter the information down here. I'm going to enter a unit of kips for my force. And then I'm going to enter an FX, which would be a horizontal load of 10 kips, and an FY of negative 50 kips. Negative meaning that it is a downward acting load. I'm going to click in a different cell to make sure that information has been added. And then I'll go ahead and click the Add button. And you can see that I have a new load type underneath my dead load case. I can add as many load types at underneath my load case as I need to. So I'll add another one. I'll go ahead and say 10 kips again for my horizontal load. But this time for my FY, I'll enter negative 200 kips. Again, I'm going to click in a different cell to enter that information. And then I'll go ahead and click on the Add button. So you can see here I have two column reaction loads below dead load. I'll do the same thing for live load. I'm going to right click on my live load case. 
select Add Column Reaction Load, and then I'm going to enter an FY of negative 100 kips. Now after I add my loads over into my load input pane, I'm ready to model those on the particular supports because I have to assign them to the supports. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my first load underneath my dead load. And then I'm going to select the supports that I want to add it to. I would hold down my control key if I want to select more than one support. So I'm holding down my control key and I'm just going to click on supports 1, 2, 4, and 5. I'll go ahead and say assign to selection and then I'm going to click on my assign load button and then I can start seeing some load arrows being applied there. I'm going to highlight my next load case. I'm going to select those supports and then click assign load. Now for my live load case, let's go ahead and expand that group. I'm going to highlight my load and for this case I want to assign it to all of the supports in the model. So I'm going to change from assign to selection to assign to view. That would assign it to everything. And I'll go ahead and click on the assign load. And then I'm going to finish off this process by clicking the save button. Now you can have as many load cases and load items for your particular model that you may need. After you are done creating all of your load case and load items, you are ready to now generate your load combinations. Over in the main navigator, I'm now going to select on the General Generate Load Combinations command. And here I can have Stat Foundation Advanced automatically generate my load combinations. And it's going to use those loading types that we defined when setting up our load cases. I'm going to select my combination table as the ASE 710. I can review all of the load cases that are going to be generated. And then what I want to do is I want to generate my service load combinations, which again will be used to check soil pressure and optimize my footing plan dimensions. And I also want to generate a group of ultimate load combinations, which will be used to check for shear in the design of reinforcement. So I'll go ahead in the service load area, click on the generate load combination button. And I'm going to do the Generate Load Combination button in the Ultimate Load area. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And here you can see that all of my load combinations have now been generated. Now if at a later time I come back and add another load case to this particular model, I would have to regenerate my load combinations to make sure that those new load cases are included in a combination. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.